Okay, I'm not going to say his name, but he was on stage and this guy storms the stage and then the comedian's mum gets up and starts rousing on him. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, James. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Community Notice Board, a podcast about suburbs we grew up in, local landmarks, hometown heroes, and coming of age H tales. tales. I'm back. Baby. The king is back. <laughs> Guys, did you see how seamless that was? <laughs> they tried to do the intro for the last two weeks, both failed. They've been making fun of me for 60 episodes. <laughs> that was perfect. And then they just watched me nail it. He got relegated really to the bench and had to watch us like, yeah. fuck up in the Champions League. And he yeah, was like, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to win that place back. <laughs> And we have a very special guest this week. We have a very funny comedian, Sam Bowden. How uh, are you, mate? I'm good, guys. Sammy. I'm good. I'm a little dusty today, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, aren't we all? Just um, finish a show? Yeah, just finished the run of shows at the Factory Theatre. And Friday night was Friday night was so much fun and, and insane. I uh, ended up getting home and we all got so drunk at the Vic on the Park mm. that I didn't remember ordering Maccas. And then I got home and I've just, I accidentally ordered like a huge family feast yeah. nice. and I finished all of it. Oh, <laughs> that's man. the best. Yeah. And I yeah. went into a food coma. I didn't wake up till 4 p.m. the next day and I was meant to be at like uh, football drinks with mm -hmm. uh, my football team. Completely forgot. Yeah, really? And then made a booking that I was a part of. So I actually owe people money for not turning up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, expensive night. Man. Uh, and that was not like, that was uh, not even your last show. No, yeah, my last show was last and night. And then you had to fucking back it up with another show. Yeah. Jeez, Jesus Christ. There's nothing uh, more depressing or like, you know, sad than seeing the fallen soldier mackers. Like, at, like in our apartment complex, sometimes you see like go out at like nine in the morning to walk the dog and there's like just one left outside clearly from someone that's oh, got yeah. drunk ordered and fall Passed asleep out. and you're every time you look at it well maybe just me looks at it and is like i could eat, still eat that <laughs> <laughs> every <laughs> same year <laughs> still good like, who <laughs> wouldn't look at it? 18 hour old mcdonald's would be like i could still eat i used to my old housemate used to put mcdonald's in the fridge and it was the disgusting. most disgusting oh, thing yeah, i've ever seen right. uh, like i don't yeah. even like i don't even like the people who are like oh yeah i'll come back to it later and then kind of eat it cold i'm like McDonald's can't be eaten like that. I don't think it's not like yeah. pizza or something. Sometimes they give it to you out the window when it's too old. You yeah. know, sometimes yeah, yeah. it's like here, here you go, and it's like I can tell this was made. But I had a mate who'd yeah. get like the whole bag, so like the chips, the half eaten burger, and like put put it all back together and just put it in the fridge oh, and then no. take it out, and you'd be like, "That's bad, you lunatic." That's we were shameful. Because he used to eat really slow as well. Like he, I don't know what happened, but he used he used to have this maneuver where he'd change the hands he'd use for his knife and fork because he didn't eat properly. So, like, he'd put his fork in his right left hand and his knife in his right hand, cut, and then change the hands over and eat. Yeah, I've seen people do that. Yeah. Oh. And so it would just take him fucking ages to eat. What's he eating a knife and fork with Macca's? Uh, <laughs> he's he's, yeah. like, he's putting it in the fridge, too. He's a creep. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> it's a sign of deviancy, I believe. Yeah, he couldn't finish his Big Mac. Can't handle whole chopsticks, that guy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so, used to, so my mate Matt used to, like, order McDonald's for him. And he used to be like, can you get me some McDonald's as well? Because he'd never eaten and lived in the fridge he'd always open it and take a bite out of it first oh, that makes and sense then, sense. but like we'd give it to him and he'd be like we convinced him for months that we were just that that was what the staff were doing we're like someone must have taken a bite out of it <laughs> oh, <laughs> someone, someone doesn't <laughs> like you but <laughs> yeah dude i had um okay so i used to work at macca's um in alexandra hills in queensland where i initially grew up and uh, we had this dude that got fired because what he'd do is he'd go and open the pancake packets because they'd come in three packets, frozen, delivered up to Brisbane from Liverpool, Sydney, and then he would just eat a pancake out of it, just cold, in the Whoa. freezer, put it back <laughs> in, pack it all up. Oh, he did, he did that for about six weeks before he got fired. <laughs> That's unreal. That's way too long as well. It's way too long. Because we couldn't figure out why these pancakes were just going missing. Yeah, yeah. And then we could, they caught him on security I cameras. reckon working at fast food just turned me off. That far, like, because you'd see all the pre cooked oh, man. shit, and yeah. it would just the like, opposite, dude. Because you, you invent your own burgers and stuff. <laughs> like. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I remember seeing like at like Subway or something when they had like they were serving breakfast sandwiches, and then 
they you could have like an egg on it or whatever and then i think i ordered one once and i saw into where he opened up the container where all the eggs were and just like all these disgusting like floating around in soup. eggs yeah. i'm like that oh and that's too much for me that's why you've <laughs> got a barricade just i don't want to see the other side oh uh, i i actually i I'm, i agree with you bensley like we started getting crazy creative when i was working with mm. mcdonald's because you needed to have something that was worth going home just reeking of like chip grease yeah because yeah. yeah. it gets in your pores that's and smell your skin. Is, is, it's hard to get off that fucking greasy oil smell. Oh, yeah, it's the worst. I'm still trying to get to the bottom of my Macca's mystery. I think I've told you guys before, but there was a night, I think two years ago, when it was only going to dip to, I think, 28 degrees or something in Sydney. It was fucking disgusting. And uh, me and my uh, girlfriend lived in this studio. It was like no heating. You couldn't open the – no, sorry, no air con. You couldn't open the windows past like an inch because of the laws where you can't open them because they think people are going to jump out. And uh, we were like, this is fucked. Like, we used to have to sleep with wet towels and stuff. And we were like, this night, we're, let's, we're going to your auntie's birthday. She's doing it at Coogee. Let's get a cheap hotel room in Coogee with aircon just to survive this one night. And then we ended up just getting fucking blind in front of her, like extended family. I'm stumbling <laughs> around talking shit. Blackout. Come to as I'm getting out of a taxi at my apartment back in Newtown. And I was like, wait, this is... This isn't the hotel room. I was just standing in front of I had to get an Uber back to Coogee. Oh, no. <laughs> I dropped so much money. And then I woke up the next day and I was trying to piece together what happened. And I looked at my phone and I'd spent like 40 or $50 at McDonald's. But I had no like Macca's taste in my mouth. I didn't feel like sick. I hadn't eaten anything. Oh, I don't know where it went. Oh, wow. You just donated to Ronald McDonald's. Apparently, yeah, yeah. I like I went in there and just started fucking throwing I cheese. I your brain's around. on autopilot and you're like, listen, I've had too much, but Drew still knows what to do. I know how to get home. <laughs> <laughs> Has a few cents left, all right? I've been, I've been this before. Yeah. It's a muscle memory drill. Oh, man. Oh, fucking God, hell. I was furious. That's brutal. So we are here today to talk about where Sam grew up in uh, Queensland. And the, the suburb is... Browns Plains, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's kind of, it's it's a little weird. It is Browns Plains, but I grew up in a suburb within a suburb oh. mm. called Forestdale mm. in Browns Plains, right. which is like this tiny little floating upper middle class island oh. surrounded by <laughs> Browns Plains, which is, it's getting nicer, but just on the... The nice way would be like it's socially, socially and economically struggling, right? right. Shall we say it was um, in an article I read this morning, one of the top six most dangerous suburbs mm. in Queensland. So Br Browns Plains, Browns Plains was right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there was a weird time uh, in about 2015, 2016, where Forestdale had the lowest crime rate in the entire city of Logan, and next door to it, Hillcrest had the highest. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And the only thing that separated us literally were train tracks. So uh -huh. we were the suburb over the tracks. Yeah. But you'd walk through Hillcrest at like 11.30 in the morning to get down to Grand Plaza, which is like the main shopping center. The only thing to really do in Browns Plains is to go get hammered and yell at a grilled um, <laughs> and then hang out by the bus stop and shit. But, um, Sounds great. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. It, you'd go through like Hillcrest in the morning and you'd be like, man, this still doesn't feel right, man. Yeah. The sun's shining, but there's a shadow over this place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're a little like a reverse enclave in around. Because Logan, Browns Plain lives in, is in the city of Logan, like mm. council area, or I guess you call it. Is that, Yeah, it, so Brisbane and Logan are technically different cities, yeah. but no one really cares because mm. Logan's not really a city. It's not like Parramatta where there's actually heaps of shit there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just more people pushed a little further south. Just a... A bunch of different suburbs that get yeah. lumped together, sort of thing. No, like CBD of Logan. Not really. Yeah, nah, yeah not yeah. really. Um, there's like the Logan Hyperdome. Mm. If you guys, do you guys know what that is? I, I'd heard we had, of we, it. We had a Hyperdome in Canberra. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know what this is. I mean, it's a shopping center, right? Yeah, oh, yeah right. like yeah. a six-level shopping center. <gasps> mm. and now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna have a few grills in it. That bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so many grills. I'm pretty sure they had. They had a hog's breath cafe. Yeah, I saw out. someone propose to their girlfriend at the hog's breath <laughs> yeah. cafe uh, <laughs> with, uh, with a fucking uh, onion ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did a whole episode of hog's breath. We love hog's yeah, breath. Yeah. But, uh, but that would have made it for sure. That's that's crazy. It's so. Funny. I don't think I've ever seen a public proposal. Yeah, really? I think so. I saw I like someone when I was last in Las Vegas. There was an evil Knievel themed New York pizza slice joint. Holy shit! Went to that's get, so specific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very specific. That's right? I went to get one lunch. guy. Very good pizza, but there were people in there 
getting married. Like they'd just been married and they were sitting down with like the that was little metal plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It was oh, really? I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, yeah. yeah. There was a, the, the chapel in the place that I stayed in Vegas came out, like exited out to the Maccas that was in the hotel. And I think like people would get like 50 chicken McNuggets <laughs> after they got married. <laughs> was the well, you've got to have something to throw <laughs> yeah. as people walk down the aisle. <laughs> Drew wakes up in a wet wedding dress. He's like, I don't know any Maccas. He's at Las Vegas airport. <laughs> I oh, it's like fuck. I love those fucking like places attached to hotels in Las Vegas. So it's just the killer like app, you know, like for when you're drinking. We we stayed in the Planet Hollywood once, and it had this 24 hour place called Earl of Sandwich, which was like kind oh. of like a little more upscale Subway, and it had like you could make your own sandwich, but it had like four or five like pre built ones that were all fucking awesome. Right. No sloppy we, eggs in this fucking yeah, no, no, not, a, not for the Earl. No. <laughs> yeah, the eggs were probably hidden away in a lower shelf <laughs> where they're even sloppier. That's but I remember, like, we'd just go there every night. One night we went out to one of those nightclubs, and like those nightclubs, I'm not a clubbing guy, if you can hear <laughs> from my voice or ever watch me on the YouTube <laughs> thing, or ever listen to anything I've ever said <laughs> on this podcast. But like that. Like, those Las Vegas clubs are almost, like, the definition of too much, you know? Like, because we did it the one night, and we are like, we'll get bottle service and stuff, which rocks because it's just people, like, bringing – very attractive people just bringing you booze all night. Mm. But, like, this place had, like, a, I guess, like, those rope net things that you climb when you're a kid, right? Like, but they were attached to the ceiling, and they just had girls in bikinis wrestling in them. What? But, like, okay. <laughs> but they weren't, like, <laughs> spotlighting them, you know? They're just on the ceiling. So oh, you really right. had to be, like, invested in the wrestling yeah, to yeah. just keep looking what, up. Cage wrestling? Like, but I don't think it was competitive. I think it was just, like, look at this. F- look at yeah. the opulence of this. We just got girls up there. They're doing shit for no reason. That's, you know? so, like, that's such a head trip. Yeah. It's like yeah. a sexy jungle gym. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, that, if, if that's on in a pub, I want that to be a spotlight. I want everyone to be cheering. I want it to yeah, be no, the thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. want it to be weirdly. No, 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 yeah. Let me be able to place bets on one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jamie's there like, what are you fighting about? <laughs> <laughs> we can Come work down. this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went there and it was it was crazy. And it was a great night. And I remember afterwards, like I bailed pre- like pretty late but by myself because I think my friends met like uh, one of my friends met a girl and went off and so I went to Earl of Sandwich my version of a girl <laughs> and uh, I got a <laughs> girl of sandwich <laughs> the girl of sandwich I got a, got a sandwich there and I've been partying all night as well and you know like possessions go fast and loose like it's a very easy place to lose your phone or wallet or whatnot mm. and i got this beautiful sandwich i'm ready to go eat it in my hotel bed and just oh like, yeah i picked up i think you scored more points to be I, honest i think i whispered to this turkey and cranberry wait till i get you into bed <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. why don't I, you slip yeah. into something a little more comfortable? Yeah. Call my mouth. <laughs> Call me daddy, you dirty little sub. <laughs> yeah, and I, like, I was so excited. I was barred up, you know, and I, <laughs> I was going to fuck the sandwich. And I reach into my, like, my pockets and I just couldn't find my hotel, okay? Like, I was uh, like condom. No, nah, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> nah, I was hitting this thing for all, baby. Uh, but I just couldn't find the hotel key, and I just did one of those, like, uh, you know, like TV romantic comedy things when you're sad, and I literally, like, put my back against the hotel door and just slid down it really sadly. <laughs> oh were you God. spooning the sandwich <laughs> while you were doing I, just, I just started unwrapping it and eating it in the hallway, <laughs> sitting next to it. Because, like, I was asking my, I was messaging my friends, being like, are you guys coming back soon? I think I've lost my key card. And they didn't respond because, like, they are out. They had their own sandwiches. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up just, like, falling asleep for a little bit. And then I just woke up, like, an hour later. Nothing had changed. And I just kept eating my sandwich. And I reached into my other pocket. And the hotel key had been there the whole time. Oh, <laughs> like, I had a meltdown just, like, looking in one pocket. Yeah. And then I think it was I was clouded by the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got from the fucking Hyperdome to a <laughs> sad sandwich, though. Dude, just, I had a really similar thing when I was uh, backpacking and through Europe, I think it would have been a hostel in like Slovenia or the Czech Republic or whatever. I have no memory of what happened. I remember going to an absinthe bar and it's not the fun absinthe that is now like illegal, but we they got us free absinthe because we are in a group and I remember taking that, walking out, blacking out and then waking up at four in the morning just holding a chicken Caesar wrap that I've gotten from a vending machine <laughs> just in the corridor of this hostel and you can see where I've fallen 
walked and then <laughs> fell asleep by the trail of lettuce <laughs> just <laughs> up by my hostel door. Hansel and Gretel like croutons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really I think I might have even mentioned this on the pod before, but when we were backpacking through Europe, the same guy who used to put Maccas in his fridge, like he bought like a chicken schnitzel roll and we would go on like the Eurail. Uh, so like we'd cross countries by train and he took that thing to three separate countries. And one of the funniest things I've ever seen is him going through a security checkpoint where like the x-ray machine and him putting his backpack and then a half-eaten sandwich on there <laughs> so for the x-ray attendants to look you see it going I'm like I think you need to do that oh, man. you can't cross the states and like you can't go from town to town with food in Australia this yeah, guy's yeah. trying to fly in a national yeah. I love the idea of just that subtle brag of I've actually eaten one sandwich in three separate yeah. countries yeah. <laughs> same sandwich oh, I love that man but I love, uh, yeah, the like Logan and then Browns Plains. I guess they're in Brisbane. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. That's almost the that's Logan itself is one of the punchlines of b- yeah. Bogan, right? Like, it's oh, Logan yeah, yeah. Bogans. That and Ipswich are they the two big ones? Do you think they're they're easily the two biggest ones? Yeah. Um, but what's really strange is that Ipswich now is becoming exceptionally expensive to live in, and mm. it's getting gentrified so heavily. Mm. Because the city is building out towards that way. So it's one of those things where it's like, if you were coming up to like do a show and mm. someone was like, just use Ipswich as a punchline, it's not going to really land that much yeah, anymore. It's confused yeah. people, yeah. But you can, uh, Logan Bogans, always. Perfect. And because where I was, were Forestdale and then Browns Plains. And then if you go just a little further is Woodridge. And Woodridge is the most Logan place you can think of essentially for one of a better phrase like that is the brisbane ghetto really yeah. right. like it's right, just right. it's you driving along and there's cars up on bricks and it just it like yeah I, it, it smells poor <laughs> 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 but like in not in a not in a man look at all these poor people and they're like oh the council have just really tapped out here this yeah. feels like gotham yeah you guys police yourselves you yeah you guys just police man. yourselves mm. and it's a again it's a pretty creepy place to be after dark it's yeah, just yeah, odd yeah. vibe I did, I did see that they're filming the tiger king movie in logan home in Lo- in logan are they really yeah 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 that's it's in that out. drama uh, sorry, version yeah, based a, on the documentary a, sorry yeah it's a six-part hbo s- show like a mini series you know mm. uh based on tiger like a dramatic retelling of the tiger king guy <laughs> and so they like you know you see tiger king like you know rural yeah. florida like and yeah. they're like where 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 suits this sort of aesthetic and who it's like, needs this we movie go. yeah <laughs> that, that that is just overkill <laughs> yeah I know, but I thought that was a big thing from Logan. And the other thing that is crazy about in the whole Logan, so the all of suburbs around planes a lot is weirdly enough, there's like um, a drone company. Do you know about this? I do not. There's a there's a company. It's owned by Google called Wing, and they are doing all across Logan, almost like as a pilot sort of thing, a drone delivery. Like I want like a uh, you know Amazon delivery, but like fucking drones driving oh. around dropping shit at people's houses. Yikes! I know, Weird. and everyone's really mad about it because people are like I just hear fifteen drones going past my house every day. There's like a million mosquitoes, and these drones have like you think of a normal little drone. They're like this big. They're they're, they're sort of two foot three foot long with about thirty propellers on them. Mm. So the whole dr- whole of Logan's just like. Well, everyone's getting and like coffees delivered, like a single coffee. Oh, that's job. ridiculous. I know, yeah, yeah. But everyone was fuming about that. I yeah. just think it's pretty nuts that we're using them to deliver stuff because if like I'm just worried that I'll order like a, a bunch of books off Amazon, get drone delivery, and then all of a sudden they'll just get sent through the roof of a hospital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Where's my books? Oh, I, then we've killed a bunch of children again. <laughs> and then your face is on the news and they're going through your books and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah. guy's got the game. And, uh, <laughs> I swear, really Gar- Garfield collect- on top. <laughs> <laughs> the collector's edition. <laughs> yeah, I just think like that's, it, but obviously they're they're pushing it hard. So there's like, you know, it's like Uber at the start where it was like $2 to drive anyway. So there's like no, like the, there's no minimum limit or anything. They're yeah. trying to promote it and get, I guess, some um, groundswell about it. So people are just ordering a coffee. There's a, there's a Browns Plains hardware store 
people are buying a packet of screws, a, pa- a nail, like just what and a fuck? single drone dropping it. Yeah. yeah. And it's just annoying. There's going to be a lot of drones loading. up on cinder blocks, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just shoot them out of the sky. Well, there's something weird, like even though like areas like Woodridge, you know, they're, they're quite poor areas. It's really weird that there's also a humongous amount of just cashed up tradies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's plenty of people out there that live out there because it's cheaper, but that's the best spot for them to be able to buy like a five bedroom, huge yard, enough space to have three, high luxes mm. and yeah, then also yeah. like a holiday home on like Coogee or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so a Coogee Mudlow. And so it's just this weird mix. I've, um, I feel it's strange. Like we don't really have a, a like a class system in this country anymore. Mm. Cause you know, like you guys have all been to the UK. Yes. Yeah. You guys know that it like you upper middle and middle class yeah, and working yeah, class yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. really clear. Whereas our working class here like just makes all the fucking money. Yes. And if you go to uni, Good luck, can't no. Know. It's sort of inverse, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like, I mean, I knew that grew up in Newcastle because, um, like, the I used to work in IT as the only IT guy at a sheet metal factory, which was like really I was wow. the biggest loser. Like, you know, that, I mean, that was very lovely, but I was like this lanky, skinny, nineteen-year-old IT. Were guy. you wearing like business casual as well? I was wearing like polos and uh, stuff yeah, like that, okay. but I had my own little office. <laughs> and um, like tiny little, it was just clearly like a, you know, s- a stock keeper in room or whatever. And I'd have a computer there and all these old tradies would like knock on the door and they'd come in. And they'd be like, Alex, watching porn are you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing watching porn in here? <laughs> and so I used to be like, yeah, mate. So they were a lot. And they all had like the most horrendous nicknames for each other. But like it was like bullying just didn't exist. Like, there was a guy called... He was bald, and they just called him Desert Head. <laughs> <laughs> the owner, the, the guy, I just got Desert, and they just became Desert. And so I'd get there, and they're like, just ask Desert. And I'm like, just Desert. Desert Head, the bald cunt down there. And then there was a guy called Two Dicks, <laughs> and they called him that. They, and I'm like, why do they call him two dicks? And they're like, oh, you know, like that old saying, silly is a man with two dicks. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and so they had all this, like, bullying. But um, I used to love it because... That was like proper working class. They weren't cat. They weren't tradies. They mm. were just working in a factory. But when the mines took off in Singleton, um, you know, when coal and all this is like oh seven or something. I don't know. But anyway, everyone like you could be working fifty grand in a in a sheet metal factory in Newey, or you could be like half an hour out of the city in Singleton, be earning two hundred grand mm. doing like driving a. Tr- and some guy was like. He's like, I'm going up there. My brother works there. And he's like, this is what I got to do. I mean, you know, whatever it was, 200 grand. I get in the truck. I drive it down this straight, this fucking road. They load it up with shit and I back it up and then they unload it and I drive it down like this. This is all he did all day. Oh, oh, I could do that. Grand. Yeah. So all these guys who were effectively before that, just like high school dropouts, I'm going to just press your know, fabric, like corrugated mm. iron now on stupid money out there. And then all, and then, you know, those old, uh, Holden Commodores like the with the like the gl- the orangey glinty color, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The, the Malu or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just they were just beep, 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 popping up all yeah, over the yeah, place, yeah. but it just reversed it all. And then people at uni were like, you know, fuck, you know. I mean, some people, but mo- a lot of people was just never going to earn that much money in their life. You know, I've been I've been really tempted to in the past to be like, I wonder what it'd be like doing like a year in the mines and just like making a couple of hundred k getting out of there uh, a girl i used to see her friend was a sex worker that would go up to the mines for two weeks make ninety thousand dollars and Holy then just fuck shit. off oh my it Lord. really is the land of opportunity yeah, for everyone yeah. i wonder if we could do that for live podcasts <laughs> <laughs> it's like do you guys want to see a podcast they're like fuck off desert <laughs> <laughs> i'm not bored yet <laughs> what's the podcast called six dicks <laughs> <laughs> so stupid <laughs> It's a triptych of idiots. <laughs> uh, I did find that um, a couple of famous musical acts from Logan ah. in the Logan area. Did you Savage find Garden? This? Savage Garden. Oh uh, yes, yep. He refuses to acknowledge his roots. Oh uh, well, that's funny because I, I is it just Darren Hayes or is it no, the other guys? Both of them, right? I, all, I don't know who was from there or whatever, but they recorded their debut album in the area. Right. So, and uh, what just like at a Nando's? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the hog's breath. Yeah. Just like, can you just keep that proposal down, actually? <laughs> recording truly madly deeply. But um, <laughs> um, the two guys, I, and this is what I didn't even know the other guy. The Darren Haynes is the famous one. Mm, the yeah. other guy's name, Daniel Jones. Imagine, yeah. you're, like, you're just the Daniel Johns was yeah, a bit yeah, the famous yeah. guy. Oh, you're yeah. like, I'm Daniel Jones. Like, no one knows who this idiot is. <laughs> but he lives in Vegas now. 
Um, Who, Dan- Darren? Dan- Daniel Jones oh. as a real estate agent. Oh, oh wow. That's wow. so quite a fucking left turn. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're actually selling. So I think it was his house that they recorded it in. And they, it sold, and I sorry, I didn't write down the suburb, but it was in Logan. But it's uh, they sold it on domain in the property description. You will fall in love with this house truly, madly, deeply. <laughs> oh, <laughs> jeez. You want to go to the moon and back? <laughs> First <laughs> sentence. You don't, ah! have, you don't have to fly to the moon and back for the perfect family home. And it just goes on oh, this phrase. Yeah. That's great. And then yeah. it says at the bottom, once. And in Logan, you can live life like animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then once lived in by the instrumentalists of the band. The instrumentalists. They're not even. But they recorded the album there and they're just saying it once lived in by the fucking backup oh, dancer, God. like the instrumentalists for the Bang Savage Garden. But so Darren Haynes. Um, what he's doing now, which is way sadder than being a Vegas real estate agent in his Wikipedia. In 2013, Darren Haynes relocated from London to Los Angeles where he studied improv sketch comedy at the Groundlings Theatre and yeah. School. Oh, oh, that's no. upsetting. He's also started two comedy podcasts. Oh, that rules. So Darren Haynes is Let's a get him on. sketch comedy nerd now. So, uh, I, so I follow I, the guy on Twitter. I've seen him do videos that's yeah. like him like doing like Vox Pops on the streets of Los right. Angeles and stuff. So, but yeah. I thought surely like Savage Garden were big enough to pay the rent forever. Like, yeah, that's, yeah that's totally. What have, that's what I would have thought. Yeah, they got I mean, screwed out of a deal somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I assume like, because I actually, this I saw this the other day on a Darren Hayes tweet. He put a thing about like, Letting uh, royalties go from like licensing your songs to movies, and he'd got a check in the mail, and it was like three a song that was featured in three movies, and he'd got ninety one cents for each one. Because I think like what happens is like they pay for the initial thing, and then as time goes on, the licensing becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So event mm-hmm. you get residual checks forever, but they event go from like ten thousand dollars to like. 91 cents. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. some movies that he, their song was like the fucking like the theme actual, song yeah. for. It was yeah. like yeah, in I the mean, trailer. Truly, Madly shit. Deeply is like a huge hit. And I'm sure that album there's would no have sold way. million. I'm sure that would have been a platinum album. Yeah, absolutely. But also like I think a lot of that, like the music industry stuff, like they give you the advance and then like, you know, it's got to recoup all those costs and they would have gone on tour. I think it's pretty hard to be like, I think the musician disparity between like, Never needs to work again, and work all your fucking life is like very thin. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that whole it's it's I feel I think feel it's the same with like authors where they're like, all right, well we're gonna give you forty thousand dollars to write this book, but when it publishes and we make all the money, we're taking out that much, and then oh look, here's all these other fees. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah, it's yeah, finished, yeah. you'll get you know yeah, yeah. twelve bucks and a high five. Yeah, exactly. But uh, he uh, so Darren Haynes was one, and then the other <laughs> big famous, well up and coming. Uh, band from Logan, No Money Enterprise, a drill rap group who are going Sick. off No right way, now. really? Yes. And they actually, honestly, I this song, they've got this hit song called German and it fucking goes off. And Do you I, have it? Uh, I, 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 just, I could play it in a minute, but I just want to read some of the lyrics com- because it's sick. But anyway, it's like full on uh, drill rap, right? And it's like they're, they're obviously Samoan and Tongan you know, uh, which I think is a lot of Samoan and Tongan communities yeah, in the big, area. Yeah, big Islander community. Big in Islander community. But um, just comparing some of the lyrics. So truly, madly, deeply, I want to stand with you on a mountain. I want to bathe with you in the sea. I want to lay like this forever until the sky falls down over me. Brilliant. Not yeah. very Logan though, right? No, no not very Logan. Not really Beautiful. calling out Logan. And then no money enterprise German. Pull up, pull up, pull up in Logan. All my Gs stay focused. And it's got a little... Pr- brackets fuck it up sick your whole crew praying at service on your knees fucking nervous pussy <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. you don't you don't talk about shank that person you ain't about thing you're probably still a virgin <laughs> fuck yeah. great concern and no saint i'm a serpent so when i run the ball no fucks hit me up like i'm burgess so it's even Sam Burgess references, but that's sick. That they're big hit song and they're calling out Logan the whole time. Do you know what? I don't think it's a Sam Burgess reference. Is it I think John it's a Burgess? John Burgess <laughs> reference. <laughs> that yeah. would rule if it was Burgess. Yeah. Oh, John Burgess. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. 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 catchphrase. Yeah. 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 yeah, I thought it would be a catchphrase thing. You guys know, you guys well, remember all those no old- fucks. Hit me up. Like, hit yeah. up. That's what I thought. 
Oh, okay, yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you going to say, Sam? I was just going to be like, because, you know, Burjo's catchphrase where it'd be like, wrong, the answer actually is pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking virgin. You fucking, yeah, virgin. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking <laughs> virgin. <laughs> Get on your knees, you're nervous. I'm g- all G. <laughs> I'm Burjo. <laughs> I could probably pull it up and play the song. It fucking goes off. But I just love it at the end of the, end of the pod. Yeah, yeah, I'll play it at the end. I'll play it at the end, actually. Um, I found a guy who, just like a local character, who um just cracks me up. He's... Uh, his name's Ed Hornery. I don't know right. if, you, if you know this guy. <laughs> That'll and, do me. And it kind of goes. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Um, it kind of like, you know, talking about how like it can be like a bit of a high crime area, a bit dangerous, and uh, local councils pull back. And clearly that's the case because Ed Hornery, uh, although in one in one profile on the age, they um, misspelled his name the entire time as Ed Horney. And I was like, this guy fucking rules. <laughs> he, um, <laughs> Mr. Horny. Mr. Horny. He's, <laughs> he's basically started up a local, it's the first chapter in Australia. Uh, it's, I think at the moment it's probably the only one because there was one in Melbourne briefly, but it shut down. But he's imported the Guardian Angels, like from that New York group in the 70s. Do you know these guys? No. no. So in the 70s, New York, there was heaps of uh, uh, like, you know, crime and stuff, especially in the subways. Oh, I do know. And this about. guy like started a group and he wears his like, Red beret, Fruity beret, and yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, got, yeah. like the shirt, and he walks around like I'm the guardian angel. It's like I'm protecting, you know, the the it's community. It's like a vigilante, like a super. It is, yeah. thing. It's basically a vigilante group, but he rejects the label, obviously. Um, but it's it's so funny because he has a Facebook page, and there's two. There's, there's Guardian Angels Australia, um, and I think the other one is literally like called the same thing or like slightly worded different, and one is just taking the piss out of him. And they, so every time they post something, he will comment in there going, fake page, fake page. <laughs> and then like a link to his one. Um, but uh, Ed, Ed Hornery, he goes by the name Hawkeye, which I, oh, yeah. <laughs> which I already <laughs> love. Self-appointed probably. Yeah, so yeah. Um, there's a photo of him and his, uh, the Logan uh, <laughs> Guardian Angels. And the current, like the head of the Guardian Angels in New York, like came to visit them. And that was a big hullabaloo. But here, here are the names. We've got, um, we've got Maverick, Hawkeye, Conda. AJ, Padre, and the newest recruit who will be given her code name soon. <laughs> <laughs> we got to pull it out of that. But get a, get a look at these people. It's, it's very... Oh, um, my God. It's a bit of a ragtag crew. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. They look like they'd be able to chase <laughs> yeah, down yeah, a robber. Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah, that's they're a, not intimidating. This that's looks like a plot to like a Jonah Hill movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, that's before the montage where they get fit at boot camp, I feel <laughs> yeah. like, and they tuck their shirts in. Um, but like my favorite part about his page, so I also learned like a word I was unfamiliar with, but did you guys know that, the, have you ever heard Bevan for Bogan? No. No, mm. you mean like uh, more than just a name? No, it's like an old school. I looked it up eventually, uh, but it's an old like 70s, but Southeast Queensland and Central Queensland term. So in New South oh. Wales, it, they were called Bogans or Westies. And then apparently in Queensland, it was, they were called Bevans. But then oh. it's just like... That's probably just because, you know, people were called Bevan. Be- yeah. <laughs> so, so. There's no Bevan with a doctorate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this guy's big on like Taekwondo and, and, and he thinks Taekwondo is like the best of the martial arts. And so this mm. other guy mm. who, started, mm. who started the um, the the fake group, he just constantly basically trolls him by like being like, Guardians, like... Yeah, he's like, oh, this is, this is, he, he's basically making fun of him for like being like guardians assemble. Yeah, yeah, like this is one of his posts from 2015. Uh, he's like, Brisbane angels beware. A group of Bevans has been seen around Brown's Plains. Apparently, they do karate, so there's little to fear. <laughs> <laughs> but please adopt the angels' defensive posture and report back by, via CB radio. And then, and then it's just got comments fake from this page. guy going, "Fake page, <laughs> fake page. This guy's not an angel." Um, but fake page. it's kind of the, like it's very wholesome. And like when you watch, it, when you look at his page, all he really does is walk around and pick up syringes from the ground and safely dispose of them. Like he's That's doing, great. Yeah, he's That's doing, so he's doing. He's doing so nice. You need a beret to do that. Yeah, exactly. Australia, exactly. I mean, like, I think I'd rather someone picking up syringes than practicing karate. <laughs> <Yeah>. on <local laughs> youth. But even then, I just you know, he's still walking around in a beret, doing karate moves, picking up trash. <laughs> That's Mr. Yeah. Horny. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Like, Mr. Horny. Horny. We don't need, someone, we don't need someone to do Eddie Gordo moves to pick up this syringe. Oh. Oh, what you do is you pick up the syringe, you put it in a bloody chokehold, you bring it down, <laughs> you down, you down, you down <laughs> tap out, you bastard. Old uh, Hawkeye Horny, there's no stopping him. Um, he His videos on Facebook absolutely rule because it's he's often wears like um, GoPro, like it's just like, you know, first person footage. Mm-hmm. And it's him just cleaning. 
but it's set to like, sometimes it'll be set to like a death metal song, just like a two and a half minute video of him nice. just picking up syringes with like the worst editing and like transitions and stuff. And then the next one will be like an 80s synth pop track, but it's just the same footage. <laughs> just like, yeah, you can't figure it. out this fucking I'm dude. cleaning up this city. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. literally I'm, I'm, I've got a broom. <laughs> yeah, that was my, that's my local character. Ed oh, Horny, shout man. out to you, baby. Did you know any local characters around from the area, Sam? Um, okay, so let me think here. Did I know any local characters? Um, honestly, the biggest one would probably just be my stepdad and <laughs> <laughs> our neighbor, Mick. And Mick was like, because they work together. My stepdad's um, uh, an electrical engineer. Yep. But like his background is in security. So he used to do a lot of security, and that's what he does now. But him you mean like security, like bouncer, or security like footage, um, every video stuff, every single bit. Right. Like, um, he, I would say Brian is my stepdad. He has stopped just short of just being a mercenary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's so, the guy. He's Patrick Swayze from Roadhouse. Basic, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he yeah, is, yeah. He's who Hawkeye wants to be. He's yeah. who Hawkeye wants to be. And this guy's got, not picking up a fucking <laughs> syringe. <laughs> he's throwing it directly into a vehicle. <laughs> he's actually got a utility belt with syringes he's found. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so what we used to do is Mick would come up and Mick was uh, this really sweet man, very loud, uh, was almost blind, like had glasses this big, mm. a huge tradie, couldn't read, never figured out how to read, but he was like insanely like clever. He just never figured out how to read. Mm. And so it was really, really funny watching him not be able to read or write and yet fix a fucking car with no manual. Like it's yeah. just, it's weird how intelligence sits in different spots for people. Yeah. But anyway, so what we would do is when Brian would clean out the shed and everything, we'd get everything in our backyard because we lived on almost acreage and then he'd cover it in gasoline. I used to do archery. So I'd get my long bow. We get an arrow. We would get an old piece of cloth covering gasoline, light it on fire. And then I would just be firing it and watching this big pile of trash oh just go God. up and watching the neighbors just jump over the fence where we have this huge bonfire at two in the afternoon. Wow, Dude. Man. You guys sound like a mercenary gang. Yeah, you got the fucking yeah. evil yeah. genius who can't see. And you got the, <laughs> your, the your, your long bow or something, you know? <laughs> Dude, when it wasn't the bow, it was Molotov. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Poke can fill it with petrol, light the string on fire, and throw it into this oh, giant man. garbage heap, and it would just That's go up like that. I mean, like, yeah. way to go into high school and be like, hey, I study archery, and everyone cocks their fist and is ready to beat the <laughs> shit out of you. And you're like, but I also light fires with it, and then it turns into like an open palm handshake. <laughs> Well, I went to I went to I went to a particularly kind of wealthy private school, mm. um, and so I was like I do art and everyone's like oh yeah no very good I do clay shooting <laughs> 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 oh yeah no I, I do a equestrian mummy has a horse <laughs> archery the swine's clay shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, peasants. <laughs> Can't even afford your own gun. Hmm? <laughs> You're just on a horseback riding up and setting things on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Setting Fun. poles of trash on fire. Yeah, there's nothing funner than having free reign to destroy something. Like if We're like, this is rubbish. We're getting rid of it. You guys happily do whatever you want with it. And then oh, you can yeah. just fucking throw malt of cocktails. That was my favourite thing as a kid would go to the dump with yes. my dad. I yeah. used to love oh, it. I'd take a cricket bat and yeah. just be smashing everything we, in Me and my brother used to run around and like that, like when we heard if you want to like, I don't know who told us, but it was like probably dad, not mum, but it would have been like, yeah, you can take anything home for free. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's the dump, you know, they want you to take. Mm. And so we would just go around like, oh, this is a treasure hunt. Like, you know, and never found, I think the only thing I ever found was like a basketball that was flat that I was like, oh, I'm sure this will pump up at home. And it didn't, and also just stunk of the dump. <laughs> so it just sat in the shed, stink, and you just just emanating the dump for ages. But it was so much fun. You yeah. just push all this shit out, fall into a big heap. Man, that was the best. My granddad took me to the what, like uh, one of the tips, I think in Captain's Flat, where he's from. And it was like I was a real, real young, probably like seven or eight, and we'd pull up in his truck, and I jumped out, and it was just like – the most serendipitous thing because I'd just jump out and landed like next to like what effectively was like a small sledgehammer. And then I like turn around and there's like an old car body there. And I was like, oh, this is the funnest day ever. Right? <laughs> I just smash every window. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. oh, it was the best. That's I uh, had a mate who like when he was much younger, this is like a 15, he got his first girlfriend at about 15. And he was like a pretty, uh, like an, he was like an emo kid and stuff. So he's like, I'm in love. And when I, he lived out in the big like uh, acreage, like out in the sticks. And he decided one night he's just got together with this girl. He's in love. And as a grand romantic gesture, he's going to get rid of all his porn 
and tell his girlfriend about it. And he had all this, like, I guess, what, you call it card copy porn, right? Like, he had magazines and oh shit. My God. Oh, old school. Yeah. yeah. So Firing he's like, an arrow in a pile of porn. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she's I'll there. i a couple think, arrows into some porn yeah. in my time. <laughs> I think she's there. And he's like, I'm getting rid of my porn. And she's like, you don't have to do that. And he's like, nope, I'm in love and I don't need it anymore. So he, like, gets one of those big oil drums, right? And he puts all his porn in it and pours, like, a ton of gasoline in it and then like lights it on fire uh huge fireball uh yeah. immediately gets out of control so like he kicks the uh he kicks the drum into his pool thinking that was <laughs> oh <it>. no <laughs> what the fuck thinking the water will destroy all the porn and destroy the big fire the pool catches fire fuck, of course <laughs> it does yeah so it's gone from this tiny thing full of porn to like I think he was doing symbolically to his girlfriend to like his dad has woken up and been like, oh, God, the fucking pool is on fire. <laughs> the pool is on yeah, fire. Yeah, go down there and set it off, and my friend has to explain <laughs> why. And he just, like, he's just got this drum full of charred porn. Oh, oh, Imagine that. Oh, that's man. on the news then. Yeah, yeah, that's like, fantastic. Young man's porn collection. <laughs> when, he, when he first told me that, he was like, <laughs> do you remember? He was like, I, I almost burned down my house once getting rid of porn for my girlfriend. I was like, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sounds like he just has so much on his hard drive, though. Computer exploded when he deleted yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. No, just old school. Well, it's like crazy that someone, because he was my age, just like fucking the only like physical porn you'd have after like FHM is like one piece of like brilliant found porno you'd find always like on the road or like in the bush or something. <laughs> found, yeah. like, it sounds yeah. like outsider art. That found yeah, yeah. porno. <laughs> found porno. <laughs> on the banks here, found porno. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What was your, um, what was your first job in? Logan, was that the McDonald's you mentioned earlier? Um, so the, my first job that I had uh, was McDonald's, but it was in Alexandra Hills. So we moved to Logan when I was about 14. Mm. and Because I, I was like, I could do Browns Plains or I can do Alexandra Hills, but there's nothing really of note in Alex Hills. Mm. Like that is technically in Brisbane, but it's a suburb outside of a suburb. It's peak suburbia. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah, to do yeah, or talk yeah, about. Right, right. It's not particularly interesting. But I was working at McDonald's at the time, just making enemies out of everyone I worked with <laughs> because I just, I was- kept bringing your bow and arrow to work. Yeah, I kept bringing your bow and arrow. Around. I was like, we don't need to get the meat delivered. I'm going to kill someone. Now you guys are more of a clay shooting. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but I was just, I was such a little shit. And um, I just, I was just such a pain in the ass because I used to, they used to put me down at Top Window which is that first one you'd go through drive through yeah. And anyone you see working down there, for the most part, means that no one likes them. Because <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. you just push them down the back into the cubicle, don't leave, don't deal with anyone. Yeah. Mm. So I just kept getting stuck down there. And so then I kept doing like noises and voices in the speakers. <laughs> and so when people would come through, just really intolerable 14 year old shit, yeah. just being like, hey, Captain, we are two burgers, please. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone would be like, Sam, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> and then people would come through and I'd put on accents and then like so like I'd put on like a Chinese accent <laughs> and then they'd come to the window and then look at me and a couple of times they'd be like was that you speaking I'd be like no, no, not at all. No, that's my colleague. <laughs> and then they'd go around and no one was Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's unreal. Man, that's and it just, sick. and I did that one night and um, the owner heard, and the owner is a former Origin player. I don't know his name. And he fucking lost it at me. Oh, oh shit. He lost it so hard. I thought you were going to so say former hard. Chinese person. <laughs> <laughs> former Chinese person. Did you ever have, because um, you're in the first window of the drive through right? Like, did you mm. ever have people trying to walk through and get an order? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. What My mate, very drunkenly, he was an absolute embarrassment of a, he is, like, but he uh, he did that once. He, he he tried to walk through. They wouldn't serve him, and it wasn't. It was one of the you know I don't know. It wasn't like ordering at the window. It was a speaker box thing, and they were saying through the the box like you can't. You, you, we can see you. You're not a car, dude. Yeah. You know, and then he like 
bashed and destroyed the sign. Oh my god. And he had to go to fucking court. And they like and he was pleading innocent the whole time and he had his grandma next to him and they played the CT footage of him just bashing the sign. He had to pay like ten grand in damages. Oh yikes. And his nan was just sitting there watching it. Nan because the nan was a sweet old lady and he because he lived with his grandma and it was just like, oh my Brady wouldn't have done that, you know, sort of thing. And he's like, I didn't I bloody slapped it or something. It was like, you know, it was like I whacked on it like, come on. Or something, you know, and it's just footage of him just like hammering it, like <laughs> double oh, fisted geez. overhands, like destroying this thing oh, because they fuck. wouldn't fucking serve him. But That's so funny, it would have had to, so I don't know in that area, no trouble, like you know, at Maccas, right? Because I would hate to work at Maccas, like in a where I grew up, like across over my high school was a Maccas, like right across, and it was like it's not like it was a bad area, but it was like. There was bad areas around it, and that was the Maccas. So yeah. I would hate, like, if, even as a kid going there, like, if I went there at 11 o'clock at night, like, as a 16-year-old, you just, like, you'd feel like there's going to be a fight there. Yeah. Just generally, there's just a, a lot of energy. People used to go to the Queanbeyan Maccas to fight. Yeah. That was a fight venue. It was, like, oh, We'd wow. drive our cars down, and we're fighting in the car park. Yeah. So it's, it was just a nightmare. Yeah. Dude, oh, people people out. love fighting in car parks. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's we, we used to have that at this McDonald's in Alexandra Hills, but we mainly just had, like, this growing heroin problem. But, like, not... Mm. Oh, excuse me. Terribly sorry. That was, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a gnarly burp. I'm True. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sounds like Sam just, you know, caught a bit of an emotional break there. But no, <laughs> he's, he's just, caught, he's he's just, just sorry, guys. He I just was, needs slightly more beer. I'm sorry, I was just remembering a barn me I had this morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, I, so we, I had a customer directly threaten to kill me. Wow. And That's it good. was like the boss was just like, oh yeah, we're just welling it back in. Like it happened all the time. Mm. But he was just he was just coked up or messed up and he was like, Mate, you me, you fuck a fillet of fish or I'll fucking stab you. I'll fuck come back and kill you. Man, who's oh, threatening for a fillet of fish? Fillet of fish. <laughs> <laughs> like a double cheese or something. Yeah, fucking hell. On, Only dude. nanas eat that. Yeah. yeah. I've never, so I've never true. ever had one. I've always thought I've never had one. I've always thought it'd be like, I'd like to just at least know what it's like. The people that like the fillet of fish swear by I'm it. I'm sure though. that yeah. I reckon I'd have it and go, Wow, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. I, had, I had one last night. <laughs> <laughs> they fucked up my order and they put... The, well, I mean, I don't know because I can't remember ordering. But I would never order a fillet of fish, but it was in the family feast I finished. Oh, right. And i got to tell you, as far as drunk goes, there's not enough fish in that burger for it to be fishy. It's still really nice. <laughs> it's right. also the fillet of fish, the trade secret of McDonald's, it's only half a slice of cheese. Like when you make the fillet mm. of fish, you get the slice of cheese and you, you have authorized to release that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get the whistleblower. We're gonna have to change yeah. his voice on this episode. I'm gonna be the masked McDonald's boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, reveal the, the magicians. That's reveal like, the secrets. It's like it's it's one like of the things in the training. They're like, ah, 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 you can't put the whole slice of cheese on the fillet of fish. You have to get it and then manually tear it. And it's like. These what? guys, the, like my supervisor was just like, and it's just like this, rips off like a half one perfectly. Whenever I did it, I'd be, get like either a quarter or three quarters. Like I couldn't rip that bad boy in half. Was that to save money or was that because of it was too cheesy? I don't think it's to save money. I think it's like a flavor thing. I think it's like oh, they, no, you don't want, because the fillet of fish, like comparatively to like a McChicken is pretty small fillet. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I, I I can't I can't imagine anyone's like taking it back because it's got a full slice <laughs> yeah. of cheese. You know what I mean? What what years were you there at McDonald's? Uh, it would have been two thousand. And also years, weeks. Like yeah, yeah, was Oh, you weren't there for long. <laughs> I was there for no. three shifts. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Before I was like, I don't deserve to be treated this way. <laughs> <laughs> Until they ran out of pancake batter. Or yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, you think they give you the batter? <laughs> no, no, those things get right, shipped up. Pre-packaged. Pre-packaged. The grossest thing I ever had to make, and I can't believe this was the grossest, was. Do you guys remember the lean beef burger? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It came in like a vacuum seal, like meat condom, oh. and you had to microwave to the point where the humidity in the bag would just drape over everything. And you had this limp dicked, half cooked, fatless burger, oh. and it tasted like shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that, the worst part is, who, whoever's ordering that is like, I'm gonna be healthy today. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like the worst. Like, it, well, just eat something. You were at McDonald's, you just lean just in. Eat. Yeah. I know there the are least, like certain really things like things. based on popularity that just like get less like. I remember them being like the apple pie machine just doesn't get cleaned. Like that thing is like because they're like not many people order apple pies. Oh, man, it's like, I, 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 quite, those I was like, pies. I quite <laughs> like apple pies. <laughs> oh, they're like, yeah. you shouldn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, really? I love it. That's I thought it'd be the healthiest thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's apple. Here, here's a fun story from fairly recently. 
I don't know if you you heard this, Sam, but the entire council got sacked. The entire council of Logan got sacked by the Queensland government. Did they really? Yeah. Or it was like, it was, it was, there were 12 council members and eight of them got sacked. So they couldn't make quorum. And so they had to like get some caretaker, like former retired public servant to come in and run the council. And um, it was just like this like insane corruption thing. Like it was the most corrupt they were doing. They were not declaring like con- conflict of interest. They were just like right. dishing out contracts to their friends. Mm. Some lady whistle was like the whistleblower and then they fired her and that's how it all unraveled uh. is because like everyone who basically voted to fire her, they were all like, well, start looking into them. Like you guys are, this is the most corrupt shit we've ever yeah. seen. Uh. So they sacked him. And, but then, and one of the councillors was the former mayor, this guy named Luke Smith. And so in just pure Logan form, while he was on bail awaiting his like corruption charges, he, um, got fucking hammered, got behind the wheel and then crashed his car into someone's house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's That's a, fo- a real political move. Here's actually. a photo of him getting released on bail after his drink driving charge while he's already on bail for his corruption <laughs> charge. Just looking like a fucking suburban dad in, uh, you know, yeah, like this is the out. man. This is the man. What's <laughs> on his the man? His shirt is like, uh, looks like a no fear shirt. I, I almost thought it said hogs breath, but it says like, uh, hogs and bulls. I don't know if it's like a local <laughs> footy team or something. I'm not sure if you know, if you guys don't know this in Logan, how we elect the mayor is whoever wins the sausage roll eating competition. Finally, in a career as a public official. <laughs> That's great. I also found one more thing I wanted to share, which was just a Browns Plains thing, uh, which was, uh, and just talking about like, you know, people threatening Maccas. This guy, CCTV footage on Wednesday alleged a man brandishing a stick trying to rob a service station in Browns Plains. And it's this video of this guy, and he doesn't have the best luck, but he walks in. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll show Sam first. He walks in with a stick. Hold on, let me just. So he's got a stick, and he points it at the guy. And then he drops a stick and then he walks out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he gives up and that's it. And then so, uh, yeah. What's the plan there? I don't know. I think he just walked in. He's had a stick. like, And he's holding it like a gun almost. Yeah, he's like, holding it like a gun. And then he's like, oh. So he's probably had like that drunken moment where he's like, I've got a gun. And then he looks down. <laughs> oh, fuck. I forgot to <laughs> swap it out for my stick. You know? <laughs> so that's real Drew Bensley movie. Yeah, yeah, I like this yeah, guy. Yeah. I like that. I like that so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the guy. But I he, really appreciate just the whole point. Yeah. Yeah, point. Oh, that's right. I'm not a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It really he, does look like you can see in his eyes when he realizes the plans but not he's quite got, yeah. they arrested him and they're ch- putting attempting robbery charges like just he's in, he's embarrassed himself you know yeah, like get yeah, him a bit yeah, of help yeah. he doesn't need to go to fucking jail imagine yeah. going to jail and it's like uh it was a stick up you know but uh, <laughs> no. he's, like, he's in a lot of like you'd be bashed <laughs> that <you know>? pun <laughs> is getting him really really raped <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's, 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 he's you the say lowest it was a on the pecking order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, but oh, it was yeah. it, it did seem like a fairly rough, like rough area. But I mean, like you know, you know, you survived, Sam. So, you, do, do you go back every now and then, or are your parents not there? Or? Oh yeah, no, no, I, I, I go back. I mean, obviously, I haven't been back since like the mm. start of last year. Yeah. Um, and but I'm going back just after Christmas, mm. and it's nice. I go back. I enjoy like my parents' house. It's like a little. It's because there's no red, there's no really where to walk to where my parents live. You need a car, mm. so the nearest place I can walk to is like a childcare center, fifteen minutes away, <laughs> and they don't really do coffee. <laughs> See it over the hill. So, <laughs> <laughs> they don't really like guys walking towards them. <laughs> no, no, either. they don't. <laughs> it's a weird place to just walk to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this but, is my goal, you say at the dead eye. <laughs> Look at my speedometer, see? <laughs> see how it keeps flashing pedo? <laughs> pedometer. <laughs> it's a pedometer. Um, no, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back and we'll just hang out by the pool and I, I'll love it for a week. And then by the time I hit about 10, 11 days, I start getting itchy. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, i got to get out. And is it, Yeah, is it like, because it's... Is it the when you're growing up there? Is it going into the city to go out, sort of thing, or yeah, pretty much because like I'm, most of my friends um, were like on the north side or like just closer inward, so we'd always go in. And then I started gigging in Brisbane. There's nothing out in Logan yeah. except for Fitzy's Logan Home, yes. run by the Sit Down Comedy Club. Oh, it's man, an open mic gig. in a place that any open mic would maybe get you killed. It's, <laughs> it is a horrendous gig. 
And even though it's in like a, an area that like it should be kind of conducive to comedy, it's just all of the patrons come there to just trying like just hate you. Yeah, it's it's an absolute nightmare. I've seen because I did a bunch of sit down those open mics and like some of them are, um, a couple of them are actually decent fun open mic gigs mm. and then a couple of them are just like not conducive to comedy and yeah. the, the, the clientele are completely fine but it's just a bad gig and yeah. then there was one or two but i've seen more like footage and i, I don't know if it was this one it might have been one at like the manly like brisbane's manly yeah beach or something where some like there was a guy doing comedy and there's some guy to storm the stage and took the mic off him and stuff and i'm like that's just only brisbane open mics would that happen <laughs> i think i know exactly the video you're talking yeah, about yeah i think someone showed it to me it is once. out in manly yeah and this <laughs> okay i'm not gonna say his name <laughs> But he was on stage and this guy storms the stage and then the comedian's mum gets up and starts <laughs> rousing on him. <laughs> <laughs> and the oh comedian's no. mum starts like like drags him off and like drags him out. And then the, then the comedian's mum like gets on stage and says, thank you and sorry and thank you for supporting my son. And oh, this guy rough. is late 30s. Oh, and it I was, was going to say, I think I know you're talking about that. And I was like... You Mustn't be that because he's in these like thirties, but is yeah, he? yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like I, 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 you know, it's I'm not shitting on the fact that his mum had his back. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, that but yeah, it's my, arguably my mum would do that. I think she'd, she'd yeah, I think, yell at some people. <laughs> It's just that's funny beautiful. to watch a grown man be defended by his mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm into I it. But that's like, that was like, the, in the was it Fitzy's, did you say? Was the other one? There's yeah. The one in Fitzy's. Yeah, that Fitzy's sounds at rough. Logan Home is really rough. It does, I like the, the common sort of uh, thought around, at, in Sydney is that a lot of the Brisbane comedians who come down, it's so good when they come down, like because Brisbane's so rough and you have to go through all that shit. And I feel like those gigs are the ones where you go in there and then, if you, you know, if you get babied when you're doing comedy, you'll never learn the chops to deal with shit like that. Yeah. But if you've, if you're doing open, this isn't like I'm a $500 headline and doing a horrible cruise. You'll, this is like open mic. This is the first cutting your yeah. teeth. Yeah. And you're just trying to, oh, anyway, I was on Netflix. And these guys <laughs> are booing you and yelling hey, at you. Anyone here got Tinder? Your mum storms on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> you don't have Tinder, you limp dick loser. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta fuck a sandwich, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you iron them. Yeah, <laughs> you fucking desert head. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Should we wrap with yeah, the yeah, last yeah. two okay, questions? Okay, so Sam, this is one of our questions we end the podcast with. Say someone says to you, Sam, I'm coming with a brand. Plans or the Logan area for one day and one day only, and I need an itinerary. I need something to do morning, afternoon, and night. What do you tell them? And you got a car, I imagine. You're not just walking yeah. to the fucking jail. All right, it? okay, childcare center. <laughs> <laughs> morning. And- All right, okay. So for morning, I'd be like, we're going to the nicest breakfast spot we have. In Browns Plains, let's go to Coffee Club. Yeah. Oh, I love a Coffee Club. <laughs> Get a That's nice a Brizzy institution. Oh yeah, it. just pay thirty eight dollars for the dry sandwich you've ever had. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's go there, and then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go check out how big the Harvey Norman is. Yeah. Holy moly. Look at the size Hardly of normal. this Harvey Norman. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly normal. That's Hardly what my Norman. dad always said. Yeah, my oh, dad Hardly would say normal. That. Hardly normal. <laughs> I love it. And that'll take us to about lunchtime. So then I take them to the only dine-in pizza hut left, <gasps> oh, to the best of my knowledge. Wow. As in like salad bar dine-in? Yep. Like salad oh, bar, you can eat. Man. pizza's out, Old dessert school, station. Um, like architecture? Yep. Like, wow, wow, this rules. Yeah, we're going to go visit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Drew wants, Drew's like, I don't like the architecture. This <laughs> actually, we have the salad okay. bar and the pizza, but I'm, I'm not sold I've, on this. I've gone, off the, I'm I've, I've gone off the fucking, you know, off my um track a couple of times, ranting about like a new McDonald's and how ugly they are. It's, yeah. like, it's one of my bugbears. You want oh. you, you want the hamburger seats that spin around? Totally. Yeah. No, yeah, you totally do. I'm with you on this one. <laughs> it's so ugly. It's they're hideous. Yeah, yeah. I love that. But the salad, but like ice cream, the fucking mm. ice, the, man, they were yeah, that rock. Off. That's we, sick. We went there for like Brian's 60th birthday or something. Because oh, he was, ju- we were just like, well, we're going to go out for dinner. It's your birthday. What do you want? And Brian, a grown man, just goes, pizza buffet. <laughs> <laughs> we're going yes. to the pizza buffet. Hell yeah. Why not? So we went there. That's where I take you. I take you there. 
Uh, and then from there, we go a little bit down the road and we do the Browns Plains Triple. And the Browns, Browns Plains Triple is uh, stopping at the petrol station for an ice break, go yeah. down the road to the gun range, blow a couple of fucking holes in some paper. There's an indoor uh, gun range. It's relatively cheap. Been there a few times. Sick. And then just go next door to the ice skating rink. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's like a weird combo where you can just do, you can go blow the shit out of some yeah. like, guns. No wonder Tiger King's getting filmed now. That's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. It fucking feels like it, Florida. It feels like like 90s growing. Like, you know, like we had a, yeah, a, there would have been like a gun range, an ice rink, and pizza. Like it yeah, seems so yeah. 90s, but it's hung on. That's well, so great. Do you know what's in between both of those things is uh, a gun shop that is, I think, to the best of my knowledge, Part of the gun shop that is at the gun range, but they specialize in airsoft rifles and paintball yeah, rifles yeah, yeah. because they're legal in Queensland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was gonna last time I was up there, I was gonna buy one because I could get um I could get like the equivalent of like an M16 air rifle, Gosh, and I was like, I'm yes. gonna bring it back with me. Fuck, that's so much fun. Two hundred fifty bucks. I reckon I can get this. Then I looked up the laws, and it's like. A fifty, sixty thousand dollar fine in New oh, South Wales. Yeah. Oh, oh my lord! Because then I was like, in the house I was living at in Arncliff, I was, I had this beautiful spot where our bedroom window overlooked our backyard, and we just had so much shit in the yard that were targets. <laughs> and I'm like, this would be great. It's quiet. It's relatively accurate. I'm not going to hurt anyone. Yeah, yeah. But then one nosy neighbor, and I'd be in prison. Be fucked, <laughs> I don't know. And imagine Logan, like all the drones around. Yeah, You'd be like, shit, bang, <laughs> shonk, shonk, shonk. <laughs> that would just be so damn. But that um, sounds like that. Honestly, sounds like a, like a like a if I was turning sixty, I'm like, let's do that yeah. fucking yeah. That we're going down that road show. Well, what's after the ice more. skating then? Okay, so then I'd go a little further down the road, and we'd go get the worst Chinese food you've ever had <laughs> at the Green Bank RSL, mm. because you can tell that even though there are pockets of Browns planes that are struggling for money, whatever the RSL is doing, that place is filthy rich. Oh, yeah, it's just like one of the nice places you can go and eat. Some honey chicken and rice. Yum. Yum. Watch some Elvis impersonator and buy like a schooner of Carlton for five bucks. That's Sick. great. So I love that. Yeah, paradise. That's a good day, man. <laughs> that is. That sounds like a fucking. That fun actually time. does sound like a sick <laughs> night. Um, oh, and one man. more, Jamie. And the final question is, Sam, you've achieved everything that you wanted from comedy and podcasting. Your career has ascended to the highest heights. When all is said and done, would you settle down in Browns Plains? Apps are fucking lootly not. <laughs> no, no. I can see that one coming. There's nothing. No, there's nothing there for me. Yeah. Like it's nice yeah. to visit, but there's nothing there. Yeah. I would much rather settle here or even just somewhere nice, like on Stradbroke Island, just off, just off Brisbane. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. Beautiful. But no, I have, I have no interest in living back there. Oh, living man. back there, but visiting once as soon as you turn sixty, you fucking huge yeah. party. Yeah. Straight to the Pizza Hut. Uh, the, the, the Pizza Hut is such a lovely little novelty, but if that's like the only Italian <laughs> option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, thanks for coming yeah, on, thanks, Sam. Sam. Oh, thanks for having me again. Um, what do you, you, you want to plug? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I don't have too much to plug now. My festival show's done. Um, <laughs> this is the second guest second in, a, in a row where we've got them at the very end of their oh, run. <laughs> okay, I have two things to plug. Uh, one is my own podcast, uh, The Boys Watch Charmed. Get it. Me and a couple Get of comedians, it. Alex Milinkovic and Will Gibb, we watch every episode of Charmed. It's very Get silly and it. fun. And um, hey, if you love plays, I'm at the Parramatta Riverside Theatre all through December with Just, which is a play uh, about all the Andy Griffiths books. Cool. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah, awesome. yeah, check that and out. And obviously, if you like bad comedy, come see you Everly Comedy. What do you every mean? It's great what do you mean bad comedy? It's, it's, the, best room room. it's the best room in Sydney. Uh, come to Everly Comedy every Sunday. We've had a lot of people come through. From about three, about three or four, but uh, <laughs> three we've four had weeks some, in a row. Yeah, we've had yeah. some people come through from the pod. They've all been absolute legends. Uh, everyone who listens to this rules, and then find us on social media. Oh wait, Everly Comedy is every Sunday at seven p.m. Absolutely, we're going down. there after this. Yeah, we, we are. are. Yeah, all three of us. Yeah, the the gang, and follow us on all social medias, and we've got a YouTube channel where you can watch all the episodes on video. They're fantastic. Alex just winked at the camera. I do it once an episode. Try and find out where. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that real? Comment the time. That's every so every funny. episode, I turn and wink at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> uh, I love it's sixty. This is sixty-eight episodes I've been doing that. <laughs> That's now. Right. Someone make a super cut of it. Yeah. It'll last Holy twenty sh seconds. Holy <laughs> shit! Are you guys up to sixty-eight episodes? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is six. Yeah. Four of them listenable. <laughs> five down. Yeah. This is a good one. We're, we're calling this episode five. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Uh, and thank if you, you got any hot tips on any like suburbs or stories you want us to cover, DM us because yep. we've got a few. Um, 
We've got a few fun ones coming We've up for you. We've got a few fun ones coming up, yep. so that'll be great. All right, awesome. Sam, Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, that was gents. so much fun, man. Catch All you right. later. See you, guys. See you next week. Peace. Bye.